All right, guys. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to a Freestyle Friday. And I had to name it that way because I wasn't planning on streaming uh, or doing a podcast. But I'm getting hit in the inbox with a lot of um, things about the Galaxy Note 8. And so I wanted to dip out real quick, just a real quick broadcast. Say what's up to everybody. Let you know I had a great time uh, over uh, in, in New York when I was doing everything uh, with the Galaxy Note at the event. It was actually fantastic. Um, and I, I, I just I was just so excited to finally get some hands on time um, with the Galaxy Note. I will bring you a review later. Uh, but you know, um, what, did they miss anything? Did they, did they miss a beat? <laughs> I mean, I have to ask this because people are asking me and I'm like, you know, I don't have the final say so, you know, I don't, I don't have the final say so whether Samsung missed a beat on something. Uh, I don't have, you know, just because I say, Oh, I like that feature. You might say, well, I don't like that feature, Jay. And you're well within your rights to, to go ahead and, 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 uh, and say that. So I appreciate you guys, guys joining me on another podcast. I didn't bring you a Tuesday night podcast because obviously I was in New York at the at the event, you know, getting ready for that. So I wanted to talk to you now. Now I've actually played with the device. I've done a and a I've put up multiple videos on this uh, on this um, dog on Galaxy Note 8. And it's a hot phone. Let's let's not deny it. It's good. But is it flawless? Nope. Far from it. And I know some of you will definitely want to give your opinion on it. So I might take some calls tonight just to hear what you have to say about it. And I know you can't really say, oh, I hate it or I love it. You can pretty much probably tell me what you think that they left off. And that's kind of what this stream is, this podcast is about. Just to try to see if some of you guys feel like they missed a beat on something. They missed a step, you know. Um, did they Did they miss a step with it? Did they miss a beat? Um should they have done this? Should they have done that? And I and I asked that question because I just posted my my official footage with the Galaxy Note Eight. And um, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Sean? In the live chat, um, I just posted my official footage. Um, you know, of of the uh, event and you know my thoughts on it. And you know, uh, I'm getting some kind of mixed views on the comments. I'm getting, um, you know, I'm getting, oh, they should have did this. You know, I don't like this. Here's what they left off. And I'm not saying those people are wrong. I, I think they have some valid points. But I think some of the some of the things I'm hearing is I don't think it, some of these people have realistic expectations. I'm, again, I'm not saying anybody's wrong. But what made you think that the, the, the Galaxy Note was going to come with dual speakers? Like, stuff like that. Like, I don't know why people would say, oh, they left off dual speakers. You know, they left off this. They left off that. It's a no go. I'm keeping my other phone. I'm keeping my S8. I'm keeping this. I really don't understand, you know, what expectations these people have because the note really didn't have stuff like that to begin with. So people couldn't have honestly believed that they were going to do it this time. I don't. I don't see how that's possible. Uh, I, I definitely didn't think that they were going to have dual speakers and all this. Some of the other stuff that they're saying. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of people's complaints are are um, just about the price. But you know what? If, if you're willing to trade in a phone, it's actually really appealing and it's totally worth it to me. To me, that is. Now, maybe not to you, but a five hundred dollar Galaxy Note eight is a fantastic purchase. A six hundred dollar Galaxy Note eight is a fantastic purchase. But like I talked about in the video I just published, um, most people might not want to give up their phone. They just might not want to give up their phone. Like, who wants to give up a brand new phone, pretty much, uh, just to get the Galaxy Note 8? You know, so a lot of people probably don't want to. Um, but, and at least I know I don't. I wouldn't want to give up my brand new phone, uh, pretty much, a year old or, you know, I, those are still brand new. I wouldn't want to give that up just to get a Galaxy Note 8. And I definitely wouldn't want to give up my Note 5 because the Note 5 has features the Galaxy Note 8 doesn't. You probably, Jay, what is that? Jay, what is that? It has one of the main features, obviously, is the um, live YouTube app. Like being able to stream directly from the phone without using the YouTube app. You use the camera app. And a lot of people who don't use that probably don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, um, hey, okay, people, sh what's going on, Grant? Um, but I feel like, um, yeah, no rest. Yeah, man, um, I just got back from the flight, and uh, I decided to finish editing some stuff, 
And then I decided to go ahead and do this quick podcast because I didn't do a podcast. And really what's happening is, and shout out to everybody who's just joining on. It's, it's your man, Jay Will, Smartphone Conversations. This is Friday Night Freestyle right here because didn't have a plan to do this. But I'm getting hit so many ways with what people hate about the Galaxy Note. And they haven't used it yet. And then also, they have valid points for some of those things. You know, so... Um, but the main thing I saw from people is that it didn't have dual speakers. I was like, what made you guys think that the speakers, they were going to have dual speakers? And another thing is, what made you guys think that they were going to have, um, uh, they were going to have, uh, what was the other one that people said? Uh, just slipped my tongue. I forgot. It was, uh, it was people were talking about they wanted dual speakers, and it was one more. Oh, the price. What am I saying? The price. People people are shocked about the price being nine twenty nine. But let's consider this though. It's not that expensive compared to the Galaxy S eight plus. You know, so Grant got some hands on at Best Buy. That's nice. What do you think about it, Grant? Um, and that's Grant S for you guys. I see my my Project thirteen is in here as well. I, I just feel like some of the expectations that people have, they're not realistic. You know, you can only go on, and not not, not one person in particular, but some some people can only go on so far saying, oh, I'm skipping it, it didn't have this. Listen, we've talked about this in multiple streams. There's never going to be the perfect device. It's just not going to happen. It's, it's, there's, 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 there's no such thing as a perfect device. And some people ask me, should I upgrade from the Galaxy S8 Plus to the Note 8? And my answer is no, because if you're not already a Note user, why are you switching to the Galaxy Note 8? Those phones are in different classes. Those phones are in different classes to me, so it, it's it's not even um, it's not even a comparison. Like some people are saying, should I upgrade from the HTC to the Note? No, those aren't upgrades. That's a you're switching classes of phones. That's what you're doing. But so did Samsung miss a beat? Should they have put dual speakers? I can tell you in my video, I've spoken of it plenty of times. I would have liked a bigger battery. I will. I would have liked more onboard storage. I would have liked that. Because the screen is fantastic. It's totally more, I said it in my video, I think, it's way more immersive than the current Galaxy S8 Plus. And I feel like that because it has the square body on it. It makes it seem so, it's just so nice. But I feel like, you know, Samsung might have missed the beat with the internal storage. You know, I don't, and, and also the processor. Now, I know they have a deal with Qualcomm, so they're going to give the US the crappy Snapdragon versions. But, you know, and I, I, I shouldn't use the terminology crappy because the Snapdragon 835 is actually a great processor. But it seems like when they put it in the Samsung device, it just seems horrible. It's like it doesn't even run like every other phone that's got a Snapdragon 835. That's just the weird part. It's, it's so strange that that's the way it seems. I mean, does anybody else feel like that? They put a Snapdragon uh, 835 or whatever the best processor is. They put it in a Galaxy Note. And it just feels like a whole nother a whole nother device. It doesn't even run as smooth for some reason. I don't know I don't know what that's about, but um that phone is awesome. That phone is awesome. The display is great. Um it's not it's not like what you guys you guys uh think. Like some of you people who haven't used it, go to the store like Grant did and pick it up and use it yourself. Because the Note 8, um uh, see, Grant feels like the Note 8 isn't as hard to handle. He says it still feels pretty much the same as the S8 Plus. But we all have different, and that's why we all have different opinions about it. I feel like it's a little too boxy, but in some ways it makes it good. Uh, but I still like the Note 7 design over that, you know. Um, I, I like the Note 7. After handling the Note 8, the Note 7, don't write that off the table yet. Don't write it off yet. Um, and I know it's just a fan edition that's available, but when those prices come down, I'm grabbing a fan edition. I'm grabbing a fan edition. Now, you know we're probably going to go ahead and still rock with the Note 8, but at the same time, um, the V30 is coming. So what did Samsung miss? You know, it's got pretty much everything. It's got an iris scanner. It's got, um, let me see what Grant says here. The, the Orchid Gray is a lighter, and it's lighter in color versus the same color on the S8. Yeah, see, and that's why I was telling people, um, no, you're right, Grant. The Orchid Gray on the Galaxy Note looks completely different in person. It looks different. It does not look like like the same phone, uh, the color. 
Um, and I, I try to explain it as best I could. I showed it in the last video that I just did. I did a close-up of it. It just doesn't look the same. It looks like a completely different device to me. Um, see, I guess Sean, Sean uh, says, when a price is near $1,000, perfection is, is, is on my mind. So I guess you'll never buy any other phone then because there's there's to the iPhone is totally far from perfection, but I like the iPhone. So um, it's just a matter of what you want to buy or not. Uh, but I don't think the Note is... It's, okay, so all of these phones are overpriced, but the Note is not overpriced. Based on what the current market is, the Galaxy S8 Plus came out at, what, 800 right? 869 or something like that? That's just a little bit off from the... <laughs> like $60, $70 more, and you got a Galaxy Note. So some people are saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe they priced that so high. I don't see how that's even possible if you're following the market right now. Um, so you should know that the phones are going to be priced that high. I think that some places where I think Samsung might have dropped the ball was memory memory options. Um, I don't like the current memory options, just sixty four and an SD card. And anybody can tell me, oh Jay, you can put a you can put um an SD card in there. What if I don't want to buy an SD card? Because again, I said it in another podcast on another stream. Depending on how fast your SD card, if you're not using one of Samsung's fast SD cards, you're definitely going to have problems with the SD card. Sometimes you'll immediately get it's too slow and it's not going to function right. You know, especially with SanDisk cards and Samsung devices. In my experience, Samsung um, uh, Samsung devices only work great with Samsung SD cards. So these new devices they're bringing out. For, and like I said before, if they would have come... Like, the, the competition is not with the iPhone 8 because somebody asked me that also. Yeah, on TV, in the media, they pit those two against each other. But if Apple were to bring a, an iPhone that has pan capabilities, then, then we're talking. Then we're talking. You know, but it's no competition with the Note and the iPhone 8. It's just what you want, you know. So, 256 gig... In the Note 8, I think that's what it should have been because the price is $930, $950, and $960. Bucks. That's definitely warranting a 256 gig option only. Even if it didn't have an expandable storage, I would have take I would take the Note 8 without expandable storage and 256 gigs on board. The iPhone 7 Plus 256 gig comes to over a thousand dollars. So I don't see why so many people are so shocked that. You know, the Note 8 came out at that price. I just think it's a lot of people that are saying those things that have no intentions on buying anyway. So, in the comments sometimes on videos, I'm starting to see this. Oh, it, people are commenting. Um, um, so, Grant says, no, adaptable storage and SD card isn't the same. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, you're right. Adaptable storage and, and it's totally different. So, But on, on the videos now, people are saying stuff like, oh, they're pretty much just calling out what they feel the Note doesn't have. But again, I always tell people, go put your hands on it, because I've done that multiple times. I've, I saw my Project 13's latest video, and he talks about what he hates about it, pretty much, and what he thinks is wrong with it, which is totally his, you know, do it. Um, I, I respect it. What's Albert in the house? What's going on, man? But I think um, until you get your hands on it, it's very difficult, because I've done it before. I've gone on record and said, this is this is going to suck. And eventually, I came back to you guys, like, you know, I apologize I was wrong. This actually is a great device. I did that with every, almost every OnePlus device. Except, well, not for the last. I knew the last two would be great. Uh, but I did it with the first OnePlus devices because I couldn't get my hands on them. Even if you have really high expectations for a $1,000 phone, I guess my question would be, why do you have high expectations? Not you, Sean, in the, in the comments, but why would anybody have high expectations for a $1,000 phone and low expectations for a $200 phone. What's the reasoning behind that? Because 200 basically what you do is not you anybody in particular but when we when we do that, we tell the OEMs, "Okay, I'll spend 1000 bucks." When we really don't want to. We don't want to spend $1000 on a phone. It's a phone. Who in their right mind would want to spend 1000 bucks on a phone? And someone like me, I'm paying full cost for it. I'm hesitant to grab the note. You know, 
Um, okay, so here's another thing. Albert says, I wish the note line would return to its roots. Uh, namely, being the top of the line spec phone. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, it, and, and I think what he means, well, I'm going to piggyback what he's saying also. Returning to the roots, to me, means removable battery. Removable battery is definitely a must. If you're not going to give me a big battery that's embedded, give me a removable battery. And that, but see, when you do, when when the OEM does that, they when they when they don't do a, a, a removable battery, they're taking away the power from the third party market because they know that we're not going to buy a hundred dollar battery from them. We're going to go on eBay or Amazon and buy a battery for twenty bucks. That's the smart thing to do. But see, a lot of the OEMs get it wrong. You know, they get it wrong. They should, they're taking the wrong approach. You got to give the customers everything that they want and let them decide for themselves. And Samsung is doing a fantastic job at making this killer hardware, killer screens. But listen, they didn't give us a 4K display because they're going to save that for next year. You know, when 4K displays are on the rise, right? People, customers are starting to want that. They didn't give us 4K re- recording on the front either. They didn't give it to us. So I don't see how a person could want it to be lower in price. Like Grant is saying now, I said it earlier, how could you expect the Galaxy Note 8 to cost less than the Galaxy S8 Plus? It's impossible. Yeah, smaller batteries. Uh, OEMs are putting, the, uh, not, all, not all OEMs, but a lot of OEMs are putting small batteries in these really expensive phones and then the the why do i have a moto e4 plus and a moto e with fantastic battery why is this why does my moto z2 play which i dearly oh man all these phones that have 3000 milliamp hour batteries they're optimized correctly my htc u11s my my moto z's these phones cost over 400 bucks however they're optimized perfectly so i'm getting fantastic battery with those but these OEMs who are putting um, these small batteries in here, kind of frustrating, man. Kind of frustrating. Kind of frustrating that we're not getting big batteries in these phones, but we're getting big batteries in the phones that cost $12, $12 and $99 and $0.28. Cents. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. The OEMs are doing this on purpose. So where do I feel like Samsung dropped the ball at? The battery size. Um, internal storage should be more. You know, I wanted 4K recording on the front. Now I have to rely on the essential phone or the iPhone for the 4K recording on the front. Because right now, in my personal opinion, no phone is touching the HTC U11's front camera. Not one. I don't care if it's 4K or not. None of them are touching the HTC U11's front camera. It's just not happening. And I can go on record and probably say, I've tested the front camera on the Note 8. It's not as good as the U11. Now, the rear camera, that's a different story. But again, that's all personal opinion. The HTC U11 has, still to me, has the best front camera on any phone I've used. And then also, the Axon 7 has the best speakers. Uh, battery life was predictable. The battery was predictable because of what happened last year. That's correct. Everybody knew that they were not going to, they were too afraid to go with a big battery because they're still trying to make their ease their way back in. Um, but I, you know, I just feel like, uh, Albert says, even with the, even if there's an SD card slot, 64 gigs on a thousand dollar phone is a joke. I completely agree. I completely, I've said it multiple times. They should have given us at least 128 gigs internal storage. Because think about what they're asking. I can get 64 gigs on a phone that costs half the cost of that. I can get, I've got a OnePlus 5 that costs half the cost and it's 128 gigs with 8 gigs of RAM. You can't see me, but I'm definitely holding it up. <laughs> you know, um, That's a joke. Like you said, it's a joke. And I, again, I don't personally have any attacks against Samsung or anything like that. The Note 8, I used it for the last two and a half days. It's great. It's great. Um, however, um, I wanted 4K recording on the front. And you might say, well, Jay, what you mean 4K? I, if you, if you remember, I was doing 4K recording, right? But honestly, when I switched to the U11, it's probably got the best cameras in my catalog. However... <sighs> 
My iPhone 7 Plus has unlimited 4K recording. Why can't other OEMs do this? That's a huge letdown for me for my U11. It has six minutes of recording. That sucks. I have to keep splitting the video. You don't know how many times I've been doing videos and I want to do a 4K video like of me from the, this one. And I, it takes too long to focus because remember I'm a one man show. So I'm doing it all by myself. So it takes too long to get that set up. And then I got to remember to stop it at six minutes. It's just, it's a, it's a clown show up in here in my office when I'm trying to do that. So I stopped and I went back to 1080p. Uh, and that's why I'm going to stay pretty much probably until I can get a 4K camera on the front of a device. And if it's the iPhone, then it's the iPhone. But they're giving us these powerful phones, but they're not hitting the they're they're not hitting the head on the nail on the head with the features that the customers want. One company that is doing that is T-Mobile, and I know that's not a cell phone manufacturer. They got that little rinky dink rebel, uh, but you know, I I needed I wanted 4K recording on the front because I don't plan on buying a DSLR because that is a waste of money to me. Because uh, DSLRs can only record 4K in most cases for like 20 minutes. Mirrorless cameras, 15. You know, it's, it's, and they heat up. A cell phone doesn't do that. I can just plug my cell phone in. I don't have to worry about it shutting off. Especially, and it's kind of sad that Apple is doing that. This is the great part about having a higher amount of internal storage. Or just not even a higher amount. Just having no SD card slot. That's the great part about it if you want to do some 4K recording. Apple gets trashed a lot for things, but I can guarantee you when Apple brings out the uh, iPhone 8, now uh, that's, a, that's another podcast. I was going to talk about some stuff with that because I got some inside scoops on that. I can guarantee you when they bring that out, though, they're going to shine up on, on Samsung in, in a couple of areas because they're already giving us a 512 mega, a 12 gigabyte model. You guys knew that, I'm sure. It's supposed to be a 512 model. The new memory options are supposed to be 64 256 and 512. Why isn't Samsung doing this? Samsung, the, the Galaxy Note 8 is beautiful. Beautiful. It is beautiful. And it's not just Samsung. I would have loved my HTC 11 or U Ultra to have at least a 128 gig option. And if you're not going to give me those bigger options, give me the ability to record in 4K as long as I want. Even the OnePlus 5 has a limit on 4K. But the cameras on the OnePlus, the front camera on the OnePlus 5 isn't that great. The U11, like I said, is still the best. And now I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to compare the Moto Z2 Play. Um, oh, I'm t- I use the Moto Z2 Play for all of the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 coverage. Some people were curious what I was using. They were like, oh my gosh, that's crystal clear. Um, and shout out to Easy Computer Solutions. He was streaming on the network, and I was streaming on the network too, but... I was using the Moto Z2 Play, and I used the Galaxy S7 for my last stream, but I used the Moto Z2 Play. Um, I used the Galaxy S7 for the Q&A, but I used the Moto Z2 Play to record all the footage for the Galaxy Note event, and it's all in the video right now that I just released. So I got to put these cameras right here against some other phones like the HTC 11. And the Note 8's rear camera, I do feel like it's not overkill, uh, but there's really nothing. Nobody has optical image stabilization on two cameras, so it's kind of hard to <laughs> it's kind of hard to you know do a battle. But you could, um, you know. Oh, I've seen the shots that Huawei has been taking at uh, with the Mate 10 at the Galaxy uh, Note 8. It's definitely going to be a battle. They already have dual cameras, and they're going to take you know. This is going to be another one of those things where I get slammed because I'm going to say that the Note 8 is not the best phone on the market. But, you know, and it's I, at this point, it's not the best phone. It's not It's not going to be the best phone on the market just based on... And remember, I've been using it. So I'm talking about from experience. Just based on what I saw, a lot of customers, even though we may think it's not too big, a lot of customers are going to think that phone is too big. And they're also going to look at the price. Even though there's other phones that cost the same... It's about Apple marketing the iPhone 8 better or, you know, LG marketing the V30 better. That's another phone. That's that's another, quote unquote, infinity display um, from the LG. I know that's Samsung's terminology, but it's pretty much the same. It has a six inch display. That's going to be a small phone with a big screen. You know, I mean, think about it. 
This is a good thing. This is a good thing. I like the competition. I'm not going to take sides with any OEM. I may have my favorites like Motorola, HTC, you know. Um, I definitely like LG. It, it, there's a phone in like different categories. Like all of the companies I'm talking about, it's not that they're making high-end devices. It's just that um, they have phones in different categories. Like Motorola is killing the low. Motorola is killing 500 and below. Um, I'm going to be producing something that's coming up 500 and below. 500 and below, Motorola is pretty much killing it. The competition at the lower part, like 250, 250 or below or 200 or below, that's uh, ZTE and Huawei. Um, but Motorola, for the most part, kind of beats all of them out because they're giving us stock Android, great performance, great battery, great cameras. I mean, consider them. If I were to take the Moto E uh, 4 and put it against the K20, it's a slaughter fest. It's even like that with the with the stylus. But Samsung has some stiff competition coming. What did Samsung do wrong? What did they get wrong? I'm going to drop the number down in here. And just in case some of you guys want to call up, you very well can. Because I want to hear what you guys think about what they did wrong. Um, and if they did anything wrong. There we go. So if you guys want to ring it up real quick, you can very well do so. I'll put you on speaker here and we'll get it on. I really feel like um, Samsung hit it right on, but they didn't knock it out the park like people wanted them to. They didn't. So here's the thing. If Samsung did hit it out the park. What did they do right? We can we can complain about what we feel they did wrong. However, I feel like they did a lot of things right. I think they did a lot of things right. I mean, again, the display, the ca the rear cameras. The front cameras are good. They're 8 megapixels on the front. Uh, but I think they're going to have some stiff competition with the front cameras. Um, the, the rear camera's definitely good. The build quality is solid. I would have liked a new... Something new, it's like um, in my other video, I said it's just familiar. And that's the truth. It's a very familiar device. If you can use the current Samsung devices, you can use that phone. It's just a matter of hardware. That's it. Like, I saw a lot of people at the event with, with um, Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S7 Edge. That's pretty, I didn't see as, hardly any notes. I thought I was going to see a bunch of people with notes, with the exception of Eric, who was sitting next to me. He had a Note 5. I didn't see hardly any notes. All I saw was S8, S8 Plus, S7 Edge, S7. And, and a few iPhones, but, you know, that was the media. The news like CNN and all those guys. But I didn't see a lot. I thought I was going to see a bunch of Note users. Nope. Laptops that I saw were Mac Pro, MacBook Pros or MacBook Airs or just MacBooks. That's what I saw. <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't see a bunch of Galaxy Notes. Just didn't happen. So, I mean, some people are asking, is, should Samsung kill off their Galaxy Note line? Well, of course not. That is a breadwinner. No, they, they said, should they also, should they kill off the S Pen? Or should it just kill off the S line? Like the Galaxy S line? Why would they do that? That's the breadwinner. That's the breadwinner. That is the breadwinner. The S line is where they're making the money. The S line is where they're making the money. That's where they're making the money. But I tell you what, Samsung. Oh, hey, Chris, what's going on? <laughs> um. Chris hit it on the head again. So we got Chris is an out shot. Bixby is something that I think shouldn't be there. Well, the Bixby button. You can have Bixby. And everybody, somebody told me, oh, Jay, you got it wrong. Bixby is king. I'm like, well, I'm glad you think it's the king. I'm glad you like it. Glad you think Bixby is hot. I don't see a purpose of having a Bixby button. But that was to be expected. You know what I mean? Like, you guys knew. If you didn't know, I mean, come on. You had to have known that they were going to add Bixby Button to the Galaxy Note 8. That's their new baby. 
You know, that's that's what they're trying to push people to use. They're trying to steal away um, Google uh, users and Apple users. Some people say, well, it's not competition for the Google Assistant can't do as much. The Google Assistant is fantastic to me. And my usage, they're like, oh, Jay, well, you didn't give you didn't give it a chance. You didn't give Bixby a chance. Sure, I did. I just didn't publicly slam Bixby. I just said it wasn't nothing I was interested in, and that's it. Didn't want to didn't want to even talk about it. That's definitely my preference because I don't work for Pocket Now and all these other companies. I can just do what I want to do. So if I don't want to talk about Bixby, and I thought it was lame in, in my testing for using it. I left it at that. I was being nice by saying it was lame. I was being real nice, but. If other people get something out of Bixby, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. But I can tell you that um, putting a Bixby button on there, um, it's, it's kind of a, you're forced, uh, but it's, it's not a bad thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's just that they're forcing us to, to do something that we, uh, you know, we, we we should have been given an option. That's all I'm saying. I, I would have liked to have the option to at least program the Bixby button or at least not call it a Bixby button. Just here's a programmable key. You know, if BlackBerry can do it, why can't you guys do it? You know? It's totally doable. It's doable. So, I wanted to drop in real quick, holler at you guys. I did just catch my flight back in, so I'm kind of tired, but I wanted to give you guys a quick stream. I'm actually going to just go watch TV or watch a live stream. I have somebody streaming live. I think um, Team 100 is streaming. I'm going to go drop over into their stream real quick. I saw I saw Rob Ponce's notification pop up on Twitter, so I'm going to go ahead over there and check those guys out. I appreciate you guys stopping by for a quick freestyle Friday up in here because I was wanting to see what you guys thought about it. I think they didn't miss the ball in too many, miss the, miss the uh, basket in too many places, but they did drop the ball in a few. So um, once this hits YouTube, you can leave a comment down there. It's your man, Jay Will. Friday night freestyle. I think it's Friday, right? Yeah, it's Friday. So it's a Friday freestyle on my podcast. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.